The Romance of the Ranchos. Santa Monica, 1840. Rancheros quarrel over pasture land. Santa Monica, 1896. Harbor fight carried to United States Senate. Santa Monica, 1941. Santa Monica, resort paradise of the Southland. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, recreating for you the vividly colorful yesterdays in the history of Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, reveals another fascinating story from the days of the dawn. Land is a wonderful possession in many ways. It is tangible and indestructible. Fire can't burn land. Thieves can't carry it away. It can be used for centuries, yet never be used up. Yes, land is a fine thing to own when you really own it. The simple way to know that you really own land, to have evidence of ownership that is readily accepted by buyers, banks, or loan companies, is through title insurance. For example, a deed to land may be forged, but your policy of title insurance protects you against such deficiency. That is why title insurance makes land readily marketable or instantly accepted security for loans. That is why, in providing title insurance service promptly and at low cost, the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles renders a real and worthwhile service to the community. And here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y señores. Our story for tonight is concerned with the beautiful section of Southern California, from princely Bel Air to the blue Pacific at Santa Monica, land which was once the ranchos San Vicente y Santa Monica and the Boca de Santa Monica, a great estate of the old Spanish domes, a land filled with the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> Our story takes us back to the coming of the first white men ever to travel the Southland. In 1769, Captain Gaspar de Portola and his company of leather jackets marched north from San Diego to explore the possibilities of colonizing the wilderness of Alta California. Camping at a spring at the mouth of the Sepulveda Canyon, near the present site of Sepulveda and Sunset Boulevards, the captain sent scouts to the west to explore the coastline for a passage north. Toward evening, they returned to camp. Hey, yeah. hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Hola. what did you find? Tell me, Capitan. I have been forward to the sea. It is about two leagues away. And what about the passage? There is none. The cliffs rise straight off from the sea. The sharp rocks offer no foothold for our pack train. Ah, that is bad. We shall have to find some other way, some path through these mountains. It looks like it. Perhaps that gap to the north is a pass. Perhaps we should explore that tomorrow, huh? Maybe so. The mountains of Santa Monica may offer us the way we seek. Eh? The mountains of Santa Monica? See, si, for so we have named this section. Santa Monica. But why that name? You have but to look at the sparkling spring over there, the bright drops of water, and you will see in them the tears of the saint. Santa Monica, weeping for her wayward son, Augustine. Oh, I see. And what could be more fitting for the sad brooding mountain shrouded in mist? See, we have named them well. This is the land of Santa Monica. The mists of time have joined with the mists of the mountains to obscure the facts. Only this legend remains to explain the manner in which the region of Santa Monica received its name. Many years were to pass before Santa Monica was to know the white man's civilization. They were years in which the Indians who had greeted Portola were the only inhabitants of the region. Then, in 1828, news came to the Pueblo de los Angeles 
to the home of Don Francisco Sepulveda. Ramona, who is that in the door? I go to see now, Francisco, in momento. Buenos dias, senora. Oh, Don Jose. Welcome to our home. SOS to Costa. Gracias. Is Don Francisco at home? Si, sí, si, sí, coming. Ramona, who is it? It is the alcalde. Don Jose Antonio Carrillo. He has come to see you. Oh, Don Jose. Come in. I'm honored by your visit. Gracias. And how are you, mi amigo? Oh, as well as can be expected for an old soldier. I should be much better when I get my rancho. <laughs> You're mighty anxious to get that rancho. Uh, why should I not be? I own 150 head of cattle. I am an old soldier of the country. I worked the most painful period, wandering amidst nomadic tribes, suffering untold privations and in constant danger of my life. See, see, me, amigo, I you, know. You ask why I'm anxious to get a little place of my own to settle down, live comfortably for my remaining years. Ah, me, amigo, do not be so angry. Uh. <laughs> I know you deserve the land of the Santa Monica's. But I could not resist the opportunity to tease you. Huh? Uh, for you can afford to be teased a little now. Well, well, what do you mean? I mean that the news you awaited has come. What? I bring it to you today. You mean? See, si. I mean the governor has decided, and he has sent me word to give you formal possession of the Rancho San Vicente right away. <laughs> Beside the springs where today stands the University High School of Santa Monica, Don Francisco Sepulveda built an adobe house. There he brought his wife, Ramona, and her family, and his cattle roamed the vast acreage of San Vicente. For ten years, their life there was a happy one, but a crisis was developing. For, as often happened in those days, the governor had been careless in defining the boundaries of his grants of land. And one day, in 1839, Don Francisco came home with bad news. Carido, what is it? What is the trouble? Oh, I, I do not know exactly what is wrong, my little dove, but... You know our neighbors to the north? The Alvarados? See, they have left their houses. They have abandoned the land in the canyon of Santa Monica. So? But that is as it should be. For that is our land. That is your state. They have claimed it. And now they have moved away, only to give the land to two others. Two others? See, si. you see the Royes and Francisco Marquez. They're living there now. Reyes is building a house on the high hills overlooking the ocean. But they cannot do that. Well, that is what I told them. But they claim it is theirs. They claim that the governor granted the land to the Alvarados, that they have taken it over. But the governor granted it to you. Well, I have always thought so. Oh, please go. What are we to do? I do not know. But this I do know. I must have that land, for it is the best pasture land near here. Without it, I have no place for my cattle. And if it means a fight, then I shall fight for it. To the end. And so began the lengthy dispute over the land north of Rancho San Vicente, which was later called the Boca de Santa Monica, stretching from Santa Monica Canyon to Topanga Canyon. For years, Don Francisco Sepulveda fought to save the land he thought to be his. He appealed to the authorities. The leading citizens of Los Angeles took sides in the dispute, Traditions were addressed to the governor and messages sent. But the years rolled on, and still there was no decision. Francisco, my husband, my loved one, we must stop this fighting. It is no use. It will go on forever, and, and we need you here at home. I cannot give up, Ramona. While there is the blood of the Sepulvedas in my veins, I must fight for the Santa Monicas. I'm going to Monterey to see the governor. I will meet him face to face and ask for justice. Oh, no, Francisco, no, do not leave us. Our little son, he cries for his father, as I do. I must go, Ramona, I must. I cannot rest until I have settled this matter. I must go. Sepulveda journeyed to far off Monterey to lay his case before Governor Pio Pico, but still without success. Finally, after many months of weary argument in the capital and in Los Angeles, Don Francisco came home, beaten and discouraged, back to the little adobe house at San Vicente, where he was met by the faithful Ramona. Ramona, we have lost. We can never own the book of the Santa Monica. They've ruled that it rightfully belongs to Reyes and Marquez. Oh, does it matter, Francisco? No. Oh, we have waited so long for your return. I've sent messengers to the city, to Santa Barbara, to all the ranchos searching for you, Francisco. And our little son, Juan, he lies ill. Near death, he what? cries for you. What? My son dying? 
No, 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 that cannot be. Ramona, take me to him. Hurry, take me to my son. For days, Don Francisco and Ramona kept vigil together at the side of their dying son. The doctor had long since given up hope, but not Francisco. Forgotten was the pasture land of the Boca de Santa Monica. Forgotten the battle with Reyes and Marquez. Only one thing mattered. The tiny, silent form on the bed before him. Don Francisco prayed. Please, please spare him. Francisco, querido mio, you must rest. You have not slept for two whole days. How can I sleep, Ramona? When he was strong enough to cry out for me, I was not here. Now that I have come back, given up the useless, foolish fight, he does not even know I am beside him. Ramona, he needed me. You needed me, Carida, and I... I was not here. Ah, what a fool I was. No, Francisco, you must not blame yourself. You only did what you thought was right. See, but now I know how wrong I was. Ramona, what does it matter? Land or gold or earthly possessions, they mean nothing compared to the warmth of the heart that comes with love. The happy love of a good woman like you, Ramona. Or the open, unselfish love of a little child. Madre de Dios, if I could be spared my son, I should never want for anything again. Francisco, Francisco, look. The padre has answered your prayers. Your little son, he reaches out his arm to you. Juan, Juan, my little son. Take him to your fancy son. And never again shall I leave you too. Not for all the world, my love. No, for all my world is here. Here with my beloved family. In the name of God, beginning and ending of all things, know all persons who may see this will, that I, Francisco Sepulveda, a native of the town of Sinaloa, Republic de Mexico, the son of Francisco Xavier Sepulveda and of Maria Candelaria Arredondo, residents of the same place, Don Francisco Sepulveda lost his fight for the land of the Boca de Santa Monica, but he gained in understanding and the fullness of life. After having performed directly, he died with more possessions than the richest man on earth, for he held the warm love and respect of those nearest to him. Perhaps that is why his will was such a simple one, reflecting a calm serenity toward life. And I have about 500 head of meat cattle, about 50 head of sheep. Even in defeat, Don Francisco triumphed, for his name has lived down to this day. And the name of Santa Monica, even though he lost it, became forever associated with his rancho and with the city which was to grow up there. With his death in 1853, passed the first great era in its development. That the bulk of my estate... I leave to my wife, Ramona Serrano, as my sole and general heiress, without any person having any reason to trouble or molest her in any manner, and leaving her without any obligation from me other than to deliver to my son, Dolores, 150 cows. <laughs> Title insurance is different from almost all other types of insurance in one very important respect. On a policy of title insurance, the premium is paid only once. In other words, when you purchase land and obtain an owner's policy of title insurance from the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, the protection afforded by the policy continues during the entire period of your ownership without the payment of any further premiums. Another thing to remember is that in Southern California... The cost of title insurance is customarily borne by the seller. When you buy a piece of property, you should require, as part of the transaction, a policy of title insurance protecting you against defects in the title. When you sell property or borrow money on it, the purchaser or lender 
will require title insurance, which you will be expected to pay for. So you'll be glad to know that title insurance and trust companies' rates are very considerably lower than the average cost of similar protection elsewhere in the United States. Already, the land ruled over by the families of the Sepulvidas, the Reyes and the Marques, was becoming a resort. Californians from the Pueblo came to the broad, pleasant beach for a picnic under the sycamores and a swim in the surf. Overlooking it all was the broad, fertile mesa of the Rancho San Vicente y Santa Monica, vast and empty. This was what met the eye of Colonel R.S. Baker the day in 1872 that he visited the land for the first time. Immediately, he saw the possibilities and looked up the heirs of Don Francisco Sepulveda. You're Jose Sepulveda, senor? Si, I am. And you? I'm Colonel Baker, Robert S. Baker. Oh, si, you're the gentleman who wants to buy the rancho. That's right. That is, I'm in the market if the price is not too high. Well, it is good land, senor. We cannot give it away. <laughs> Nobody's asking you to do that, Don Jose. I'm willing to come to the right terms. Yes, that is good. You want it right away? You bet. I've got a sheep ranch up in Tahoe County. That's my business, sheep. This looks like good country for them. Sheep? You wish to make San Vicente into a sheep ranch, senor? Sure, why not? San Vicente is a cattle ranch, senor. It has always been since my father first <laughs> got it. <laughs> oh, come now, Don Jose. I realize how you cattlemen feel about us sheep men, but you wouldn't let a little thing like that stand between you and a good price, would you? Mm. Senor, if it were just for myself, I would say to the devil with you and your sheep. But since others of my family have an interest, too, me madre, brothers and sisters, I will not. They are anxious to sell the land so that my father's estate may be divided, so... Good. We may as well discuss the price, then. Very well. But we will not take any cheap price. We have discussed the matter. We feel that the value of the land has reached its peak. Therefore, we shall ask a high price. Well, you have about 30,000 acres. How about $55,000? I... What was that? $55,000? Say that again, senor. Why, sure. $55,000. That's a fair price, isn't it? Senor, do you mean that? Of course. Your hand, senor. There. It's settled, then. We, we shall have the papers done up immediately, eh? Well, the sooner the better. See, si, before you... Yeah, I mean, see, si, of course. Tomorrow, perhaps. All right, tomorrow, then. See, si. Madre de Dios. 55,000 pesos. <laughs> The great ranch of San Vicente y Santa Monica came into the hands of Colonel Baker, and shortly afterward, he united it with part of the land of the Boca de Santa Monica, as Don Francisco Sepulveda had unsuccessfully tried to do for so many years. From the Reyes and Marquez families, he added the acreage, and soon he was the master of a vast and thriving sheep ranch. But the life of the ranchero was not all work. Colonel Baker had time for the social life of the nearby city of Los Angeles. It was there... That... Oh, what a superb party, Doña Arcadia. I'm enjoying it very much. I'm glad, Senor Baker. I'm always happy to have you here. You should try to make it more often. You really miss me? But of course. Doña Arcadia, <laughs> I have something I want to ask you. See? Si? Uh, aren't you tired of dancing? Perhaps. Is that what you wanted to ask me? <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, can't we go outside on the balcony? See, si, of course, Senor. Come this way. Here we are, outside. Yes. Uh, it's a beautiful night, isn't it? See, si, lovely. But then most nights in California are nice, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. You, you, you said there was something you wanted to ask me. See, si, uh, oh, I, I don't know whether I should or not, Perhaps but... Perhaps I can't decide that. You may. But you don't know what I'm going to ask. Don't I? Senor, don't underestimate a woman's intuition. You know, then? You have known all along? Si, Senor Baker, I have. And here I've been afraid, acting like a schoolboy. You must have thought me a fool. Oh, but no, Senor Baker, of course not. But I know why you were afraid. Yes, it's your late husband, Senor Stearns. I didn't know how you felt. He is gone, Senor. He was a fine man, and, and I loved him, but he is gone. He would not have wanted me to be alone. Of that, I am sure. Well, that 
That relieves me a great deal, Dona Arcadia. And now, uh, and aren't you going to ask me? But you already know. See, si, but every woman has a right to this moment, Robert. It's just a little thing, but such a tender memory. Will you be my wife? Not that there is no mio. I can ask no more than to be your wife. Beautiful Arcadia Bandini de Stearns became the wife of Colonel Baker and continued her long reign as the social leader of the growing city. Then, in 1875, Colonel Baker's domain was touched by a new era. Senator John P. Jones of Nevada appeared on the scene and bought a three-quarter interest in Rancho San Vicente y Santa Monica. Together, the two owners mapped elaborate plans. Uh, Senator, do you think it can be done? Of course it can be done. Everything is all set, the plans are laid, and we're ready to start building. Why not, Colonel? For this country's only started to grow. We can ride the crest of the wave. Yes. Yes, we can even make the wave. And we can put this town of ours on the map. Yes, but what about San Pedro? Southern Pacific's already built a railroad down there. They're using that as the harbor for Los Angeles. We'll put them out of business in no time. We've got just as good a harbor right here. And with a little money, why, we can make it a better one. But they've got the railroad. We'll build our own railroad. I've got the plans all laid out. Here it is, the name and everything. The Los Angeles and Independence Railroad. Straight from the mines up in Inyo County down to Los Angeles, then out to here and onto our wharf. From there, our ships will sail to every country in the world. But the Southern Pacific will connect with the East. And so will we. We'll extend our road on East to make connections. Why, Colonel, this is a big thing we've gotten a hold of. We've started a new town, Santa Monica. In a few days, we're selling the first lots. And in a few years, we'll be running the port of Los Angeles. Yes, well, dear ladies and gentlemen, the auction is about to begin. Yes, sir, you're about to get your first chance to buy a lot in paradise. Just look at it. Against the backdrop of the Pacific Ocean, draped with the western sky of scarlet and gold. And just imagine this beautiful emerald bay filled with white-winged ships. Just draw in a breath of that frostless, bracing, warm, yet unlanguid air, uh, odored with the breath of flowers. The title to this land, ladies and gentlemen, is guaranteed by the owners. And the title to the ocean, the sunset, and the air by the creator himself. All right, who'll give me a bid? Who'll make the first bid? The flowery oratory of auctioneer Tom Fitch brought in the first bid of $300 from Harris Newmark. Others went like hotcakes. Within nine months, the new city of Santa Monica had a population of 1,000 people with 160 houses. But the ambitious plans were never to be realized. The railroad was stopped at Los Angeles. The long wharf, built 1,800 feet into the Pacific, failed to bring much shipping to the new port and San Pedro and Wilmington forged ahead. Forgotten for a time were the dreams of a great harbor, as the little town, instead, busily forged ahead as a site for homes. Then, in 1891, another railroad entered into competition with the Southern Pacific at San Pedro, and Carlos P. Huntington of the Southern Pacific determined on a bold policy. Yes, gentlemen, I do mean it. I'm going to take the Southern Pacific to Santa Monica. If the Terminal Railroad can bring their tracks right out onto Rattlesnake Island, we're going to be licked. That brings them right into the center of the harbor. We have to do something, and this is what I propose to do. I'm going to make Santa Monica the harbor of Los Angeles. Thus began an argument which eventually was carried to the United States Senate, where Senator Stephen M. White was an outstanding supporter of San Pedro. Mr. President, members of the Senate... Before you vote away three million dollars of the taxpayers' money on the worthless harbor of Santa Monica and give the true harbor of San Pedro only 390,000, I want to propose an amendment to this bill that a board of army engineers chosen for their neutrality and for their confirmed judgment on such matters shall be appointed to determine the desirability of each of these harbors and I propose that the money we appropriate here shall go to whichever harbor 
the majority of them decide shall be the best. I am confident that if you shall adopt this fair and unbiased manner of determining, the harbor of Los Angeles shall be at San Pedro. <laughs> It is the verdict to this board of engineers by a vote of four to one that the harbor of San Pedro offers more advantages as a free port and that the money appropriated shall be used in its development. Santa Monica lost the fight and Carlos P. Huntington took his Southern Pacific Railroad back to San Pedro. This beautiful city of Santa Monica on the sprawling mesa, with its precipitous cliffs falling away to a golden beach and a foaming surf, was not to become a bustling harbor for the ships of the world. Instead, it has become one of the world's loveliest cities of homes, a world-famous pleasure resort, a healthful, pleasant place in which to live. Today, it is the home of almost 80,000 people in the residential communities of Santa Monica, Brentwood, Brentwood Park, Sawtell, Pacific Palisades, Westgate, and a part of the United States soldier's home, and also furnishes the home site for the great Douglas aircraft plant. And so is written another chapter in the romance of the ranchos. A few moments ago in the course of our story, you heard a reference to titles in the speech of auctioneer Tom Fitch. The title to this land, said Mr. Fitch, is guaranteed by the owners, and the title to the ocean, the sunset, and the air by the creator himself. Even in those days, purchasers of land required something more than the guarantee of the owners. Deals were usually concluded only after some competent person had made a search of all available public records, and after the report, or abstract, of such search had been passed on by an attorney. But even then, the purchaser had no insurance to protect him against loss in the event that some document might have been accidentally overlooked. Today, such insurance is available from the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. And because of the completeness of its records and the efficiency of its hundreds of expert employees in making title examinations, both the search of the records and the insurance of the accuracy of the search cost you less than the partial protection did in the early days. Now, Frank, what's on the calendar for next week? Our story for next week deals with the first discovery of gold in California. Yes, and it did take place in Southern California on the Rancho San Francisco near Newhall. Tune in next week and hear all about it. Until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. <laughs> The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.